From a blast in Canada that leveled every building in a half-mile radius, and an industrial accident regarded as the worst in U.S. history, to one of the largest non-nuclear explosions ever caught on camera, and the incredible newly released footage of the infamous Tsar Bomba. Here are the 10 biggest explosions in all history. Texas City sits on the southwestern shore of Galveston Bay, acting as a busy deep water port for ships entering the Gulf of Mexico. The city is about 40 miles southeast of Houston and plays a major role in Texas's petroleum refining and chemical manufacturing. However, Texas City is better known for a massive explosion that destroyed the entire port and almost leveled the city. On April 16th of 1947, two massive trade ships docked in the Texas City port. The SS Grand Camp, a 437-foot vessel, was recently assigned to help rebuild France after World War II. On board were 2,300 tons of ammonium nitrate, a common ingredient in high explosives. About 600 feet away, another ship named the SS High Flyer was carrying her own load of ammonium nitrate. Combine that with a warehouse full of fertilizer, and you're looking at the perfect recipe for disaster. Around 8 a.m., someone spotted smoke coming from the Grand Camp, but the captain wouldn't let them use water to fight the fire, fearing they would ruin the cargo. Instead, he ordered them to close all the hatches and use steam to smother the flames. But the steam only made it worse. Ammonium nitrate is an oxidizer that probably converted the steam into nitrous oxide. A little after 9 a.m., the Grand Camp exploded, causing extreme damage to anything within a 2,000-foot radius. The blast destroyed nearly 1,000 buildings on the land and sent a two-ton anchor soaring 1.6 miles away. And that wasn't even the end. The boom caused the High Flyer to drift into the harbor, and 12 hours later, it detonated with even greater force. Many consider the Texas City disaster the worst industrial accident in U.S. history, and we still don't know what caused the Grand Camp fire in the first place. Some say it was a discarded cigarette. The summer of 1969 was a thrilling time for the global space program. The United States and the Soviet Union were vying for control of outer space, and whoever could get a man on the moon first would likely claim it as their own. On July 3rd, a massive explosion on a Soviet launch pad handed the space race to the Americans. The Russians were testing their N-1 moon rocket, the Russian counterpart to NASA's Saturn V. In total, the Soviets failed five times to get the N-1 into space, but try number two proved the most catastrophic. The N-1's second flight only lasted a few seconds. Onlookers saw a bright flash when it cleared the tower and noticed debris falling off the bottom. All but one engine shut down, and the rocket tilted at a 45-degree angle. It crashed back to Earth and detonated the 2,300 tons of fuel on board. The nuclear-level blast sent rocket bits soaring over six miles from the epicenter and shattered windows within a 24-mile radius. As he witnessed the explosion, Soviet Lieutenant Colonel Komarovsky said, Today I saw the end of the world, and not in a nightmare, but while fully awake and standing right next to it. On August 4th of 2020, social media was ablaze, thinking someone had just nuked Beirut, the capital of Lebanon. A massive explosion in the port of Beirut claimed over 200 lives, left more than 7,000 injured, and caused $15 billion in property damage. The blast left 300,000 people without homes in a country already dealing with a collapsing government, record-level poverty, and COVID-19 outbreaks. So, what really happened? Well, the story begins in November of 2013, when a cargo ship called the MV Rosas arrived in the port of Beirut carrying 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate. For one of many speculative reasons, the ship was abandoned, and its cargo was stored in a warehouse in 2014. And there it sat for six years, just waiting to go boom. 
On August 4th of 2020, a fire began in Warehouse 12, the same warehouse that held the ammonium nitrate. Someone also had the bright idea to store it next to some fireworks. A small initial explosion equal to between 1.5 and 2.5 tons of TNT destroyed the warehouse and sent smoke and fireworks into the sky. Then, 30 seconds later, all hell broke loose. A second, more powerful explosion nearly leveled the entire city. It was felt over 150 miles away in Cyprus, detonating with force equal to 400 tons of TNT. For reference, the nuke dropped on Hiroshima in World War II blew with 15,000 tons or 15 kilotons of TNT. As of 2022, it's the sixth most powerful non-nuclear blast in human history. By September of 1921, Germany was three years removed from the First World War. Then a massive explosion at a chemical plant in Opau, now modern-day Ludwigshafen, gave them flashbacks to Allied planes and deadly bombs. The Opau explosion is the fourth largest non-nuclear blast in history and was caused when 4,500 tons of ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate ignited in a tower silo at the BASF plant. Today, BASF is the largest chemical producer in the world, but in 1921, they were responsible for over 500 casualties. According to the Norwegian Defense Research Establishment, the BASF plant used small explosions to break up piles of hardened fertilizer. Now, while that sounds like suicide, a study in 1919 suggested mixtures of ammonium nitrate and sulfate, containing less than 60% nitrate, were safe and wouldn't explode. BASF kept the mixture at 50-50, so blast away. Now, this worked for the most part, until it didn't. A pair of massive explosions, only a half a second apart, destroyed the entire plant and left a 300 by 410 foot crater behind. People heard the blast in France, over 186 miles away, and experts believe the explosion released between 1 and 2 kilotons of energy. On June 27th of 1985, the United States Defense Nuclear Agency initiated Project Minor Scale. The plan was to detonate several thousand tons of everyday explosives to simulate the effect of a nuclear bomb. They wanted to see if their new MGM-134 Midgetman ballistic missile could withstand the blast. Like most nuclear tests, the military set up shop in Nowhere, USA, also known as the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. They gathered 4,744 tons of ammonium nitrate and fuel oil, which would detonate the energy equal to 4 kilotons of TNT. At the time, the Defense Nuclear Agency called Minor Scale the largest planned conventional explosion in the history of the free world. As World War II raged in the Pacific Theater, the United States converted Port Chicago, a small California town about 30 miles north of San Francisco, into a full-scale munitions facility. By the summer of 1944, Port Chicago was loading ships with munitions all day, every day. Unfortunately, the Navy forced untrained African-American units to carry the most dangerous cargo. On July 17th of 1944, the workers spent four days loading 4,600 tons of live explosives onto the SS Quinault Victory and the SS E.A. Bryan. Another 400 tons of explosives were waiting in nearby rail cars. Just after 10 p.m., a chain of massive explosions eviscerated everything in the area. The 5 kiloton blast was so powerful that people felt it in Nevada, and minor damage reached San Francisco. Smoke stretched almost two miles into the air, and a pilot flying 9,000 feet overhead swears he saw metal bits whip past him. According to the History Channel, 15% of all African-American casualties in World War II lost their lives during the Port Chicago explosion. There were 320 people on board those ships when they blew, including 202 African Americans. Now, 
Now picture this, you're Winston Churchill and it's November of 1944. The tides of war have been turning since America entered the fray, but nothing is certain, not in the slightest. Then, on November 27th, a massive explosion at your underground Royal Air Force weapons depot leaves a 1,000-foot crater in the countryside. Was it the Germans, the Italians, or did something go terribly wrong? At 11 a.m., between 3,500 and 4,000 tons of explosives detonated at the RAF storage facility in Staffordshire, England. The facility, also called the RAF Fald, was 450,000 feet of underground mining tunnels they repurposed for munitions storage. Things were pretty hectic during World War II, with munitions being armed and shipped out of the Fald every day. Now, at the time, the British government covered up the cause of the disaster, not wanting their enemies to know how bad it was. In 1974, we learned the explosion was caused by bombs that workers removed from storage, armed, and then put back with live detonators. The RAF Fald accident is the second largest non-nuclear explosion in human history. And there has never been another boom quite like it in the UK. The largest non-nuclear explosion occurred on the morning of December 6, 1917, off the coast of Halifax, Nova Scotia. A French cargo ship named the SS Mont Blanc was en route to Bordeaux, France, with a cargo load of high explosives for the war effort. But while leaving the port, it collided with another ship, the SS Emo. The slow collision, about 1.2 miles per hour, was enough to damage some benzoil barrels stored on the top deck. The flammable vapors leaked into the air and caught fire thanks to sparks from the collision. Flames engulfed the top deck, and about 20 minutes later, the whole thing ended in catastrophe. The Mont Blanc exploded, releasing 2.9 kilotons of energy. Anything within a half-mile radius was obliterated, including an entire town. The pressure wave leveled buildings, snapped trees, and bent iron bars. It sent the Mont Blanc's 90mm forward gun flying 3.5 miles away, with the barrel half-melted. The half-ton anchor landed two miles away in a town called Armdale. The explosion also triggered a tsunami that washed away an entire native community who had lived along the water for generations. The Halifax explosion claimed 1,782 lives and caused $35 million in damage or $809 million today. Eluge Lab was an island belonging to a Pacific archipelago known as Enowetak Atoll. Today, Enowetak Atoll is part of the Marshall Islands, an independent island nation due west of the international date line. But in the 1950s, it was the site of thermonuclear weapon testing by the United States including the two biggest blasts in U.S. history, Castle Bravo and Ivy Mike. Now, we've covered Castle Bravo extensively on this channel, so for this video, our attention is set on Ivy Mike. Ivy Mike is the second largest nuke ever detonated by the United States, blowing with 10.4 megatons of TNT. But Ivy Mike was so big, about 74 metric tons, that it would never work as a deliverable weapon. The United States just wanted to prove they could do it, especially as the Cold War saw the US and the Soviet Union continuously one-upping each other. Over 9,000 military and 2,300 civilian personnel helped on the Ivy Mike test in one way or another. They finished the test site on Halloween of 1952 and then hightailed it out of there before the boom. The massive blast produced an instant three-mile fireball and a 56,000-foot mushroom cloud in under 90 seconds. It doubled in size over the next minute, stretching 108,000 feet high and 100 miles wide. And as for Eluge Lab Island, well, it did not survive the blast. Meet Igor Kurchatov, widely considered to be the father of the Soviet atomic bomb. Under his guidance, the Soviet Union built and tested the largest nuke ever detonated, the Tsar Bomba. 
On October 30th of 1961, two planes flew over one of those tiny Arctic islands in northern Russia and dropped the 27-ton Tsar Bomba. Bomba приближается к точке взрыва. Высота 4000 метров. Осталось 3 секунды. 2, 1, 0! Взрыв сопровождался световой вспышкой необычной силы. В этот момент самолет-носитель находился в 45 километрах от места сброса. Вспышкой последующие свечения, несмотря на сплошную облачность, были видны в радиусе до 1000 километров. Любой столб, поднимающийся с земли, быстро увеличился в объеме. Через несколько секунд после взрыва диаметр полевого столба составлял около 10 километров. It self-detonated about 13,000 feet above the ground and exploded with 50 megatons of force. For reference, one megaton equals one million pounds of TNT. So we're talking 50 million pounds of TNT in one bomb. The Tsar Bomba's blast was 3,000 times bigger than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima and broke windows upwards of 560 miles away. A bomb that big would create a 6.4 square mile fireball and could cause third degree burns within 4,000 square miles of its epicenter. So how did the pilots even survive? The Tsar Bomba was so big and powerful that the Russians had to attach it to a one-ton parachute. The plan was simple. Let the bomb float slowly down to Earth so the pilots could fly 30 miles away. Their calculated chance of survival? About 50%. To see another video just like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thank you for watching and be sure to tune in next time.